In this presentation, we will work a problem related to allocating costs between departments, in our case, Department C and Department L. We're going to have our information up top. We're going to enter that information into the blue areas down below. Our scenario will be that we have these costs up top. We're going to need to have some method to allocate these costs to the departments department c department l we've got the depreciation on the building interest on the building taxes these are going to be the value-based costs this will make sense more as we go then we have the gas heating and uh, expense the lighting expense the maintenance that's going to be the total occupancy costs so there's the costs of the building we're going to be allocating between departments multiple departments of course being in this one building that we need to allocate to so we have the square foot for the floor per floor of this building we're going to say this is multiple floor building square foot per floor 5000 the occupancy is 80000 so occupancy costs we're just pulling down the occupancy costs which are in essence these items up top we just totaled up so this is the 80000 and then the total square feet in the building is 10000 so if we then divide that out the simplest way we can think about this then is we could say well if the costs are 80000 and their square feet in the building of 10,000 square feet total, and we have people on multiple floors of the building, why don't we take the costs, the occupancy costs, divide them by the square feet? We get $8 to do so, and we can use that then, that rate, to apply to each department depending on how many square feet of the building they're responsible for. So that's how we would use this to apply out the costs. Remember, you're thinking about the internal accountants here or the internal managers that are going to be arguing over you know what costs or how much costs are going to be applied to their department they of course are going to want to limit the cost to that are applied to their department so l is the first floor department square feet has 9000 c is on the second floor and has 1900 square feet so notice this isn't the entire company we're just talking about two departments c and l and they have 900 and uh, 1900 square feet that they are basically managing within the building of course now our goal is to apply out this 80,000 or part of this 80,000 uh, to the departments including these two departments now if we just break this out nice and easy here we're just going to say we'll just apply it out based on the square footage that makes sense and we can say all right well then l and c all we'd have to do is say their square footage is 9,000 and 1900 so we'll pull those down and we've already calculated these the cost per square foot that we're going to allocate out so we're going to say the rate then is going to be this eight dollars so the rate is eight dollars and then we'll just multiply that out we're going to say this equals the 900 square feet times the eight dollars and this equals the 1900 square feet times the eight dollars and that means that we're going to allocate out 7,200 and 15,200 to C or L and C, respectively, that being a total of 22.4 of the occupancy costs of 80,000 they were adding up. So again, these aren't the only two departments involved. So that would be a nice straightforward type of allocation. You can see how this would apply out, how we can use this basically a ratio type of analysis based on square footage to apply something out like the occupancy costs. However, you can also imagine a situation where the managers might might argue about this because, of course, this is what in some way is encouraged to some degree so that we can basically have the proper allocation of costs and have good, uh, basically, responsibility accounting involved in this. So you might see something like this could happen. We'll say, well, the value of the rental space by the floor is that the first floor is more valuable than the second floor. You can see an argument that could be made in this case right because if you're on the second floor and you're managing the costs of the second floor as we see in uh, c department versus l department you might look at this breakout and say well no this isn't fair based on the fact that uh, this the first floor is more valuable than the second floor and we're allocating costs as if the value is the same maybe it would be more fair to value the costs based on you know market rate with the fact that the first floor should be weighted higher given the fact that it's better that it's a more valuable property and we can show that by basically just looking at the market value of the property and we could say well the first floor cost per square foot is forty dollars whereas the cost 
per square foot of the second floor is only $10 on a market rate. So it doesn't make sense. In that case, you can see the argument being here for somebody on the second floor, the manager on the second floor saying, it doesn't make sense for us to be allocating costs equally amongst the two floors. Now you can argue this back and forth and say, well, maybe that's not the driving factor, uh, or maybe it is, but you can see how this type of argument would come into play. And if it was determined then that the market value of the square footage should determine how we should influence our allocation, then our allocation can become more complex, but possibly more fair uh, if we determine to that, you know, if that was to be the case. We could say, all right, well, now we need to find out a method that we could basically take into consideration the fact that the first floor is valued more than the second floor, and therefore we should be allocating more of the occupancy cost to the first floor. So a scenario like that could be worked out in some in this type of format. We're going to break out these costs between the value-based cost and the usage-based costs, which we saw in the in the data up top. So I'm going to say this equals. I'm going to scroll up top, and we're going to pick up the costs depreciation on the building tab and we're going to say this is the then we want to be in the value-based cost so when the value-based cost this is going to equal and we're going to scroll back up and that's going to be the 22.5 and enter we're going to continue this process on down we're in a29 which equals scrolling up top that's going to be the interest on the building tab tab we're in the value-based cost section now this equals we're going to scroll back up top the 33,750. You know what? You do want to use formulas as much as possible here. We're going to say equals in A30. Pick up the next item, taxes and building, tab, tab. We're in the value based column, equals and scrolling back up. That's going to be the 10,000. Now, the next are going to be the usage based. So, gas, we're going to say this equals scrolling back up the gas and heating, tab, tab, tab. We're on the usage based costs now, and this equals, and we're gonna scroll back up and pick up the 3,125 and enter. And then we're gonna say equals in A32, pick up the lighting expense, tab, tab, tab. We're in the usage based cost equals and scroll up. That's gonna be the 3,750 and enter. And then we're gonna say equals in A33, scroll back up, maintenance expense, tab 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 usage cost equals scrolling back up that's going to be the 6875 and enter and that's going to give us our total occupancy costs so we'll total this up now i'm going to sum up this way so we have the total costs so we have our check figure and the first column equals the sum of these two cells so we're just totaling those items up and summing back down just so we have uh, a total column and then we're going to sum up this way sum sum this is going to add up to the 80,000 we just basically pull down all the numbers and then we'll sum this across I'm going to do this with an auto fill selecting the 80,000 putting our cursor on that little that little item there and dragging across and that sums up the rows so there we have it we broke it out between 66,250 value based costs and 13,750 usage based costs now we're going to consider the market value of each floor and we're going to use this market value in our calculation to allocate the costs. So we've got the first floor, the first floor. So we're going to say first floor and the square feet is 5,000. So this equals, I'll pick this up from up top. That's going to be uh, square feet per floor, 5,000 square feet tab. And then the value per square foot, as we said on the first floor, was this $40. So tab, we're gonna say that the market rate then is 5,000 square feet times the $40. And then we have this second floor. So we'll pick up the second floor, which is also gonna be 5,000 square feet. So we'll scroll back up. That'll be the uh, square feet of 5,000 tab. And then we're gonna say the value per square foot will be $10 tab. And then we'll multiply this out. This is the 5,000 times the $10 and enter. And that'll give us the total market value. So the total market value will sum up the outer column equals the sum of the 200,000, the 50,000 and enter. That's the 250,000. 
So now we'll do the allocation value based uh, base cost based on its percent of the market value. So now we're gonna pick up the, the first floor. So we'll say first floor, and I'm just gonna keep the same market value. I'm gonna say, here's the market value on the first floor. And we're gonna say the percent, and then we're gonna pick up the second floor. And that's going to be the 50,000. We're just repeating the data here. And then we're gonna have totals equals the sum of these items. Now we're gonna use a percentage method here. So we're gonna take the percentage of the total. So the 200,000 over the 250,000 now that we valued it. So we're gonna say, all right, here's the equals to the 200,000 over the 250,000. We're just dividing that out. And of course we've formatted the sale as a percentage 200 over 250 is 0 0.8 or 80%. And then we'll take this equals the 50 over the 250. That'll give us the 20%. If we sum those up, then of course that's our 100%. So there's gonna be basically our allocation. And then we have the costs that we're going to uh, be allocating there. And that's gonna be equal to, and if we scroll back up, that's gonna be the uh, value-based costs. So we're gonna take this 66 to 50 times, and then we're gonna take this 80%. So we're gonna allocate those out on uh, 53,000. This one is gonna be equal to, and we're gonna take that same, the value-based cost to 66 to 80 or 250 times, and that's gonna be the 20% and enter. So there we have that, we're gonna sum this up. So we've allocated out now that uh, 66,250, and then we've got the cost per square foot. If we consider what the cost per square foot, it will be equal to the uh, 53,000 for the first floor divided by how many feet are on the first floor, which we said was 5,000. So 5,000 feet on the first floor, and then the second floor, we're going to say this equals the 13,250 divided by how many feet are on the second floor. And that's going to be the 5,000 as well. And, ta and there we have it. So, so here's our allocation of the cost. That's basically what we wanted to do here. But we also want to just break that out into a cost uh, per floor because that will help us to allocate out to the departments that are on those floors now. So now we'll take those numbers and we're going to add to it the usage based allocation rate. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, going to copy the same information, first and second floor, paste those here. And then we're going to copy or just pull over this information. This will be the 1060. This will be the uh, 265. So those are the value base so where we're just kind of allocating the value. Now these are going to be the usage base and, and, and these items we're considering, hey, we shouldn't be taking into consideration market value when we're breaking up the usage base. So the rate here is going to be this just a straightforward type of calculation that we saw before. It's going to be equal to the usage base, which is 13750, because this is based on use, gas, lighting, maintenance, and whatnot. And therefore that won't change with basically the value of, of the property. So we're going to take that and we're going to divide it by the square footage, which we said was 10,000 for the entire building and say, uh, enter, and that'll give us the 138. And it's going to be the same across the board. So then if we add those two up, we'll get our total rates that we're going to use. So we're going to say this equals the sum of the 1060 and the 138. If we add those up, that's going to be our total rates that we'll use per floor. And you can see what we've done here is we've obviously have a, a higher rate for the first floor than the second floor, given the fact that there's higher value on the first floor based on the market value. So then if we take our departments uh, L and C, and we apply out the departments L and C, we know that uh, we have 900 and 1,900. So if we copy that down, then the rates we're going to take are going to be the 1198 and the 403. And then we have our allocation, which will be the 900 times the 1198. And this will equal the 1900 times the 4.03. And now we have a, a very different kind of allocation between L and C. We've got the 10778 and the 7648. 
versus up top we had the 7-2 uh, and the 15-2.